I'm going to be diving a little bit deeper into Void Linux today. And today I'm going to be showing you how to manage your entire Void Linux system and how it's different than, you know, other Linux distributions and really what makes, you know, the internals of it so great compared to other Linux distributions. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by saying, uh, by telling you about the XBPS package manager, which if you don't know what XBPS stands for, it's a mouthful. Uh, it stands for X binary packaging system. At least that's what I remember it's called. Um, and it's a very portable, very fast and just simple pa uh, package manager or set of utilities for managing packages. And one thing you notice if you install, you know, Void Linux is if you try running XBPS, nothing happens. It tells you it's not found. And you'd be wondering, oh, maybe there's a man page for that. Nope. And the thing with XBPS is that XBPS isn't one program. It's actually a collection of, I think, 16 programs? Yeah, 16 programs. And uh, they all work very well together, but uh, they're all separate, all separate programs that help manage your packages and keep your system, you know, running in tip-top shape. But there's only around three that I use regularly on a daily basis, and that's XBPS install, XBPS query, and XBPS remove. And those three um, I use the most, if not daily. So I'm gonna be showing you how to use those. Uh, first up is XBPS install. And as you guess, it installs packages. So let's install a package that I don't have. How about, <laughs> I definitely don't have VLC. Um, I'll go install that. And it'll ask you, a, hey, uh, we're gonna install 17 packages, which it's VLC and 16 other dependencies, which is one of the reasons I don't use VLC. There's a lot of dependencies to it. But just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna download it. And there we go. So I uh, went ahead and downloaded VLC. Uh, so some other things that XBPS install can do is you can run XBPS install, um, you can do cat, uh, dash uppercase D to download the packages you want, or only download and not install them. You can do U to only unpack them. You can do other things too, like you can do dash lowercase R to specify where you want to install them to, where your root directory is. Uh, you can also do things like, there, there's actually um, a whole man page you can look at, but you can also define custom repositories too with capital R. Uh, one of the most important ones is capital S, which will synchronize your package database or repository list. And this will keep your um, list of packages up to date. And if you actually want to update your system, you can do xpps install dash s u. And lowercase u is, of course, update. Um, one thing that a lot of people can get confused with is they'll do SYU, which will still update your system, but it's different from Pac-Man, which what Pac-Man does is, uh, that's a, um, I think for Pac-Man, it um, has something to do with synchronizing your repository, whereas XBPS, the Y stands for yes, as in like confirm the update without actually informing me. So that's just something you want to keep in mind, but. I'm gonna do XPPS install SU, and it'll give me a list of packages that um, I can update. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna say no, but I will keep a little terminal over here with the update, and you'll see you'll see why in a moment. But I'm gonna go ahead and update it down here. Okay, there we go. So next program up is uh, XBPS query. And what XBPS, <laughs> XBPS query uh, does, it, it, will, it will query and search packages. So if I do that, if I run that, and I run a package, like let's just say VLC, it will go ahead and print out all the information it has on VLC, like the name of the package, your architecture, build options, change along, file size, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera dependencies, you know, um, basically all the information it has on it. 
And this is good to see like what's exactly, you know, what files it's gonna install, what things it's gonna do to your computer. So it's a great thing to, uh, great thing to have. Another thing you can do with XDPS query is you can do dash lowercase l to list all the packages on your system. And of course, if I'm gonna view that cleanly, I can pipe that into less and just go ahead and scroll through all the packages I have installed in my system. So that's another nice thing you can do. You can also go ahead and run dash lowercase s to search your system's packages as well. So if I want to search for pack packages containing MPV, there's only one MPV. And not only that, it'll actually search the package descriptions as well. So I can say uh, video. And it'll give me all the packages that have some relation to video or have video in the name or things like that. Um, another cool thing to have. Um, you can also go ahead and query um, if you do capital O, you can actually query your orphan packages, which are packages that um, are not a dependency or you didn't install directly. And so as you can see, I have a few, and I'll get rid of those in a moment once I show you the other XDPS program. But you can also um, you can also query um, you can also query. Um, your repos, for example. So if I have a non-standard repo installed, it'll tell me, but I only have one repo. Um, and that's another thing about XBPS as well, or XBPS install, is you can actually add um, other um, repositories. Yeah, there's, let's see, uh, void repo, debug, multilib. They have a non-free repo, which I think is nice. So you can separate non-free packages from free packages. and that's going back to install, but FTPS install, but uh, anyways, XBPS query, you can also uh, go ahead and if you want to search remote packages, packages that are not just on your system, you can do capital R and S, and this will search remote packages. So I could, for example, do, uh, what's a package I definitely still don't have installed? Um, let's do, I think, clam av and it will search there we go clam av and give you a list of all the packages with that title in it or in the description and so that's xbps query now we're going to move on to xbps remove and this one of course like the name states removes the packages the names are very straightforward but oh, XBPS remove or remove packages. So for example, if I want to remove VLC, uh, it'll go ahead and do that. But as you can tell, it only removes just VLC. It doesn't actually remove all the packages associated with VLC, like its dependencies. If you want to do that, you can actually do remove capital R, which is recursive, or stands for recursive, and it'll recursively remove all these packages. But I'm just going to go ahead and install just VLC because there's another option I want to show you, and that is XBPS remove, and that is a lowercase o. And lowercase o will actually remove all your orphaned packages, which are packages where, um, that you didn't install directly or were, were dependencies. Uh, and you'll see that it'll remove all these orphan packages, including a few ones that were dependencies of VLC, like Samba, yeah, Samba, um, and a few other ones too. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and actually do that real quickly. It only take a, like a second too. There we go. That's that's quick. Um, as well, you can also do XPPS. Oh, another great uh, one to have memorized is XPPS capital O. And what capital O does, it'll actually clean the uh, cache of packages you have. So if I run that, oh, no, not install O. Oops, sorry. XBPS remove O. Oh. And this will, of course, will clean uh, your cache of all your installed packages. And, or, sorry, outdated or obsolete packages. And so when I did that, and as you can see, my update finished right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut back because I'm going to reboot my computer and show you what you can do to help um, uh, 
keep track and manage your Linux kernels. So I'll do that. Okay, so I went ahead and reboot my system because if you're gonna to wanna to manage your um, uh, kernels you have on your computer, your Linux kernels, um, you're gonna to wanna to have, you're gonna to wanna to boot up to the latest kernel that you have installed because you're gonna be removing your old ones, probably. <laughs> but one command that, or the command that uh, Void gives you to do this is vk purge. And it's a very simple command that only does a few things. It'll, it lists, your updated kernels and it'll remove them. That's it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You can run sudo vk purge and then the list and let's give you your password. And it'll take a moment, but it'll go ahead and list all the outdated kernel versions that you have on your computer. So if you want to get rid of those and not be able to boot into them, and as well as free up a bit of space on your computer, you can run sudo vk purge remove and then re remove the version that you want. For example, I could do 5.10.115.1. Of course, you want to remove all of them, like I do, um, except for the one you're running right now, which is 5.15.45-1. Uh, uh, let me just go ahead and do all. And this will just remove all your outdated uh, kernels. And it'll only take a quick moment to do that. But like I said, very simple command, only does a few things. So we went ahead and did that. And so now that we're done, you know, managing the packages and the kernel and everything like that, I'm gonna show you how to actually use Runit, the init system that Void and Linux ship, ships with. And one command that Void and Linux gives you is SV, and this stands for, I'm pretty sure, service. Um, it does, I don't think it really <laughs> stands for anything, it's just SV. But yeah, SV will let you view and control your system's services uh, for run it. So if I do SV status, it, of course you have to give it the status of a running um, service. So I think I have what do I have running right now? I think I'm also running in the background. Um, oh, of course, you have to do sudo. Um, have to have super user privileges. And it'll go ahead and show you the status of also. Or, for example, oh, oops. Uh, I think I also have cups running. Uh, oh, cups D. It'll go ahead and show you the status of that as well. Uh, that's not much status, but it gives you a bit. You can also um, also go ahead and set certain services up. Um, like if I if also wasn't running, I could set that up, or I could also um, disable it for uh, this boot period. Uh, I could set it down. You can go ahead and do once, which will run um, a service once uh, if it's not enabled by default as well as you can pause it, as well as a few other things. It's pretty straightforward. But one other thing, uh, the way you actually enable services is run it gives you two, direct two directories, or two directories that you should work with. It gives you etsy slash sv, and these are all the services you can choose from to enable, and slash var service. Oh, ls slash var service. And these are actually all the um, services you have currently enabled in your system. And if you want to enable a service, for example, if I want to enable, mm, let's see, uh, if I want to enable rsync d, uh, what I would do is I would create a symbolic link from etsy sv slash rsync d and I would link that to var service and if I go back and look at var service or slash var slash service um, I would see that rsync d is now enabled so next time I boot up my system it'll be running in the background and of course if you want to disable ser uh, services at boot time you can just go ahead and remove it from var 
slash var slash service. So go ahead and do that. And now it's disabled. So that's that's really the majority of how run it works. It's extremely simple and there's not much to it, which I absolutely love, at least compared to systemd. Systemd is very complicated and very messy for me. But that's really the majority of all the things Void Linux has to offer you. There's one more thing I have to show you, and that is a command that ships with Void Linux, and it's Void Docs. And if you run that, what it will do is it will open your default web browser, and it will give you all the documentation um, it has on Void Linux. Of course, this is also on Void Linux's website as well, but they give you a local version you can use offline. For example, it tells you how to install it, how to configure different things, use different programs, and basically just get your system, keep your system uh, running and running smooth. And that's really all. That's really all I have to show you, um, at least in depth in Void Linux, because, like I said, it's, it's a very simple system compared to other systems, even like Arch Linux. Like compared to Arch Linux. Void Linux is way smaller. It may not be Alpine Linux small, but it's it's a lot it has, it's a lot more minimal and a lot, in my opinion, faster and just better overall. So yeah, that's uh, managing Void Linux. I'll see you whenever.